Okay, so I'll try to keep this one short. So this one is not going to go into big levels of details, but these four industries are basically the industries every ambitious person is considering if they are trying to strike it really big. If they are trying to become UHNWIs, ultra high net worth individual. So it's important to have a good overview over those four things and how they differ specifically. Now we're not going into all the levels of details because this will then become a video of four hours and I don't want that. I have other stuff to do, <laughs> um, but uh, I'll try to keep it to 10, 15 minutes. Okay. That being said, let's go. Okay. So um, in the past I have had quite some experience in these different industries. So I have never... To be frank, I've never worked in investment banking or private equity. So what I did was I worked at the German Federal Bank for some time. I did internships at huge startup accelerators and incubators. I worked in a top German top strategy consulting firm for three years. I founded my own funding accelerator. And uh, right now what I'm doing here in China is so-called venture building, which is we're uh, giving money to startups and being heavily operationally involved in these startups which is a bit different to pure play VC investors who are just giving money and then that's it right but I have helped uh, people get jobs at top PE funds I have helped people get into investment banks I have many many friends who work at all the top investment banks PE shops and so on I think I will try to give my personal opinion on a couple of parameters so the first one shall be work content what is the type of work that you are doing in these four industry the second one is the work-life balance so how much fun can you have the third one is the salary and the last one are the exit opportunities within these four industries now let's compare all four along these four parameters starting with the work content management consulting management consulting i would say work content will be a lot of creating powerpoint slides a lot of excel a lot of talking to the client now let me be a little bit more precise first thing you will do is you will need to somehow extract and analyze data so that can be done via interviews you're talking to the senior manager of some firm that can be done by looking at databases and downloading the right sets of data and uh, that can be done via expert calls you know hiring experts and so on also once you have this data you need to crunch the numbers right so you'll probably build an excel model you will you know have a mission on what exactly you want you want to get out of this data and that's the first step now the second step is you need to present it so that means for you you need to think about how to visualize this data in order to get the message across and you need to present it to whatever the board or the client uh, representative that you are reporting to on the project and so on so it's basically these two things for investment banking it's similar you need to extract data right and you need to somehow present it the difference is that the involvement with the client is much less and it's more focused on numbers. So if you extract and analyze data, it's going to be much more using Excel, uh, using bigger sets of data, uh, using more financially connotated data. And you're at the stage when you're presenting it, you're more likely as an analyst to present it to your boss than to the client. You're more likely to be the one working on the deck, you know, than the one who's actually going to present it to the clients of the bank. And so in general, many people agree that in investment banking, you have less interface with the customer, with the client, at least in the first couple of years working in investment banking. In the first couple of years, it will be much more quantitatively driven, crunching a lot of data, working much more with Excel than with PowerPoint. And that's a bit different in consulting. Private equity. Here your job comes, becomes a little bit more nuanced. Also based on 
what this private equity shop that you're working at, at is doing exactly, what's their strategy and uh, what's their size. It can differ a lot. Now, some of these private equity funds are super quantitatively driven. Some of them are more operational and uh, this will very much dictate what you do. In general though, I would say it's more similar to what you do in investment banking with the difference that now suddenly you have more interaction with other service providers like for example investment banks that are also working on big deals that you are working on as well as with your targets or the basically your, your investing companies. That's also the reason why private equity shops, they like to hire people from investment banks because they know how to do stuff. They know how to build an LBO model. They know how to pull the comparables from certain databases. And so what you do is somehow comparable to investment banking with the difference that I would say, you know, it's less of a, less of a pure sweatshop, but you can also take the phone call and uh, talk with you know a fellow investment banker for example who's also working on the same deal and tell him hey man like please deliver this and that uh, so you have a little bit more leverage as a vc the work content will be the most versatile i would say because somebody needs to talk with all these startups right so you need to as an associate let's say at a vc firm you need to talk with a lot of startups you need to get their opinion you need to understand them thoroughly. You also need to do a lot of research on the industry. You need to compile that research in a coherent way. You need to work on data. So you need to find out you know, how to value that startup in the end so that the VC fund is able to invest or not and so on. And all of this with limited data availability. So remember uh, for startups, you know, many of the data you're working with is to be honest, like it cannot be taken seriously, especially for very young startups. What you have is basically a bunch of wild projections and you, you know, toss a coin and you're like, okay, is this true? Yes or no. And that's it. So here in VCs, unless it's a very early, uh, it's a very late stage CV, it's unless it is a very late stage VC, you don't have that much data to play around with. So your uh, social skills will be much more important. Now, coming to the work-life balance, if I would have to rank it, I would say work-life balance from best to worst, venture capital, private equity, management consulting, investment banking. Now, this order, this rank can look totally different based on what VC firms, what PE funds, what management consultancies and what investment banks we're talking about, okay? So there's a huge, like, this is totally different for some other firms, but in general, if there's something like in general for this kind of question, it would look like this. Now, VC fund, now at like a normal VC fund, they will not work too hard, you know? Of course, when deals are coming up, you will work a bit more but it will be all right. Same for PE funds. The reason why many investment bankers and many management consultants aim to go into PE at some point is because it's less work. I mean, that's one of the main reasons. So we can put that hypothesis out there that at a PE fund, you work a little bit less than in management consulting. Of course, there's also sweatshop in uh, PE <coughs> Apollo um, that where there's lots of work and they treat their analysts like you know something that's replaceable because in fact it is but as a generalization it would be true that at PE you work a bit less than in consulting or banking now consulting and investment banking we have made that comparison before in a video of mine I would say in investment banking you tend to work a little bit more now what you have on the other hand is you have high travel in consulting so that can make things a bit more stressful depending on whether you like traveling or not right but that's something to take into consideration for PE and VC travel is all right sometimes you will need to travel to talk to startups or to talk to targets of the PE fund sometimes you don't have to generally in consulting it's super excessive and you will travel to your work location every single week so if you don't like that it's nothing for you 
And from my personal experience, after a couple of years, you get a bit tired of it. So at the beginning, it's nice to live in fancy hotels and whatever, but at some point it just gets a little bit, it seems a bit unnecessary at some point sometimes, quite frankly, to go to all these locations because you're wasting money. You're wasting money and you're wasting time. You're less efficient because you need to sit in the plane and pull out your laptop, you know, and do some work on the plane. You're less efficient. But that's just my personal opinion. Now comparing the salaries. Again, a bit difficult, but in general, if we would have to make an order here for analyst roles, for early roles, so analyst associates, it would probably be PE, investment banking, management consulting, venture capital. But again here, it's not super easy, right? Because again here you can pick other firms and this order would look different. But what I see in the industry a lot is former investment bankers and management consultants going to PE. Again, that happens not only because you work less, but also because you earn a little bit more. Plus you get a carry sometimes even. So you get compensated when you work on big deals and you do your part in making these deals successful. You get a decent bonus. You also have that inve in investment banking. You already made this comparison between investment banking and management consulting in the past. You earn a bit better in investment banking, definitely, especially the bonus is much higher. So there you have it, PE, investment banking, management consulting, and venture capital, to be quite frank. At the beginning, there's not much for you to take from deals, you know, because you're not a partner, you're not you know, participating in the fund in any way. And that's the main value component. So that's where the partners make all their money. You will earn a base salary, which is decent, which is better than 90% of what people earn in your country probably, but it's less compared with the other three industries in many of the cases, okay? Again, depending on the fund. Now I want to make one video recommendation, which is private equity versus venture capital. The video is literally called like that, I think. It's up on this channel and you should check it out because there's many things I can't cover in this video. So check out the video private equity versus venture capital to get a much deeper uh, overview of what constitutes important differences between these two industries and professions. Now the last point is about exit opportunities. Where do you have the best exit opportunities? Now, if I would have to make a ranking here, it would be management consulting, investment banking, and then private equity and venture capital, more or less on one, on the same order, or even PE, and then VC, the worst. Why is that? Management consulting, everybody knows. As a management consulting, you're a generalist. You're keeping all the options open. As a management consulting, you can go into banking afterwards. You can go into a startup. You can go into industry. You can go into PE. That's it. As an investment banker, it's quite similar, but it's a little bit more focused on the finance industry. So if you are looking for working in the financial industry in the long term, for example, you're aiming for a hedge fund, then go into investment banking. Because for example, as a management consultant, going into a hedge fund will be difficult. As an investment banker, it's very much possible. But again, you're more focused on the financial industry. So that already limits your exit opportunities a little bit. For private equity, you are more specialized. For you, it's more difficult to start working at an industry or even to start working as a, you know, in a startup as compared to being a management consultant. And for VC, you could argue that, you know, you get more exit opportunities in the startup space. So you could, you know, become whatever, a co-founder or something like that. But even that is not entirely true because as a VC, you are never taking responsibility, right? You're only the one distributing money. You're not the one executing and actually implementing. It's the same actually for management consulting, by the way, you know, you're giving these fancy slides to someone and you basically say, okay, please do. You don't take any responsibility for whether or not this stuff is implementable in the first place. Same for VC. So once you are a VC, like a pure play VC, exit opportunities are a little bit more limited 
than, for example, compared with management consulting. That being said, it all depends on your whole resume, right? If before you had a lot of different areas that you explored and uh, you did had internships here and there, you worked in management consulting for some time, then you went into venture capital, it's a totally different thing, right? Because it, not only your current experience counts towards your exit opportunities, but also all the prior experience. But what we are assuming right now is that this individual has just worked in consulting, has just worked in PE, just in VC and so on. Now, I hope that at least helps to make the comparison between those four a little bit easier. If you want, check out my video Private Equity versus Venture Capital to get a little bit deeper into the material and uh, make your own opinion about these both professions that are very desirable professions, I would say. If you are a young, ambitious person and see you next time, my people. See you next time. It was a pleasure to have you. Bye-bye.